Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a hemostat flower. For this project, I want the flower to only be on the front of the shirt. So using a washable marker, I find out where the center of my shirt is. And then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve to help center it. That's not necessary. You can just isolate out the front of the shirt, but this is just the method that I use. Now that I've isolated out the front of the shirt, I'm going to use a washable marker to mark out where I want the center of my flower to be. I'm also going to mark out where I want my flower to stop. I don't want this one to get too big. And then I'm just going to grab up those marks that I made and I'm just going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to start my airplane fold. If you have folded it correctly, you're going to see five pleats on one side and two big pleats on the other side. I tied a slip knot in my sinew and I'm going to slip it over the tip of the shirt and then I'm going to pull it really tight. And you don't want to make that tip too big, otherwise the center of your flower will look humongous. So I found that line that I originally drew and I'm just going to mark it out on the outside. That way I know where to stop my hemostats. You want it to be about maybe two inches from the collar. So you don't want your flower to be right on top of the belly button, but you also don't want it right up on top of the collar. You gotta find a happy medium. And then I'm just going to click down my hemostats on the tightest click possible. And I'll just let you watch how I put these on. As I work my way down with the hemostats, with each flower petal, I'm making it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going a little tiny bit further than I did with the hemostat before it. For the rest of the shirt, I'm going to do a scrunch. And so you want to really ruffle it up, undo it. And I like to do tall peaks and low valleys. I think on Facebook, everybody's calling it tall, deep scrunch, something like that. But you really just want to take it and tear it apart and then scrunch it all back together. Try not to mess up your hemostats while you're doing it.
I decided to secure it loosely with some rubber bands. You could get away with not securing it. You could just use your foil or your cake molds to hold everything together. I just wanted to keep it nice and tidy. And now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. So for the flower, I'm going to do liquid dye. And then for the scrunch, I'm going to do a watercolor ice dye. For the grape, I wanted to be really nice and tidy and outline the hemostats, but it just came gushing out. So it ended up just being, it is what it is. I want to give a shout out to a tie-dye friend. His name is Greg and he has a channel called Goyo's Garden. He's just starting out and he's a big supporter of my channel and so it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would head over and subscribe to his channel. It just takes two seconds for you to click on subscribe, maybe watch a couple of his quick tutorials and leave a comment and a thumbs up and you know let's help his channel grow. There's about a thousand of you that watch just about every single day and support me and I really appreciate it. And it would be totally awesome if we could blow his channel up and help him grow so he, his content could get out there and other people can find him so more people can learn how to tie dye. I love my viewers, you guys are awesome and I really do appreciate you. I'll put a link for his channel down in the description box that way it's easy for you to find. Thank you so much. If you choose to do an ice dye like I did, you're going to need to build yourself some type of an ice barrier. For this one, I went with foil, but you could use cardboard or cake molds, whichever you prefer. So I have my rack at an incline already, but I felt like it wasn't much of an incline. So I decided to use an empty die jar to help prop up the rack even higher. My concern was is that all of this dye and ice are gonna flow into the flower, and I didn't want that to happen. Make a mental note about what I'm doing right here. I got the dye a little too close to the flower. I covered the flower with some plastic wrap and then I let the ice melt overnight. And then I came back and checked it in the morning and I felt like there just wasn't quite enough saturation in the scrunch part, but I also felt like it was really dark with the sage green. So I flipped it over and I decided that I was just going to use only powder pink. I 
I wanted to give you guys an update on the Facebook group. It's doing really well. We're up to about 400 members now, and I think that's really amazing. So if you haven't joined, I recommend that you do. I would love to see your creations. And I have links for all of my social media listed down below in the description box. So go ahead and check that out and then come over to Facebook and request to join and I'll let you in and then show me what you're making. Since we're going to be packing more ice on here, give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then let this round of ice melt and let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. It's been 48 hours and now it's time for the rinse out. And look at how dark it is. So I'm freaking out at this point, but I tell you guys, I should listen to my own advice. You just don't know what it's going to look like until after it's dry. So you wanna start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And then from here I take it to the washing machine and I do a couple hot water cycles using Synthropol. And then I, on the second wash, I take a little plastic clear cup and I dip it in there and I look at the water and if it still has dye in it, then I'll do additional hot water cycles with Synthropol until that water is clear. I do a final wash using Milsoft to bring softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And then I put it in the dryer and then I iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our hemostat flower after it's been washed and dried. And I think the shirt is really pretty. I like it a lot. It was so dark during the rinse out and look at how much it lightened up. Remember how I said to make a mental note? So we lost some of the flower petals at the top of the flower. And I wish that wouldn't have happened, but it's okay. It's tie dye and you know, tie dye isn't always perfect. I think once it's on the body and it's moving around, I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue. Well, at least I hope it isn't. And I really like the way the watercolor turned out. I used this colorway about a month ago on one of the time-lapse uh, tutorials. And this one is so much darker than that one. And so from project to project, you just really never know what you're going to get. And especially with these watercolor ice dyes, there are so many variables, like how fast does the ice melt? How much dye did you add? How much scrunch did you put on the shirt? You know, all of that factors in, so it's hard to reproduce things. So custom orders, um, they're hard. So anyways, what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel Leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.